We talked about the blades. This is now the time and place to look a little bit inside how the blade is made of, what is its structure and materials. Now, different types. From a material point of view, blades are laminated wood. They can be made by aluminum and they can be made by lightweight glass and force plastic. And this one, the lightweight glass and force plastic, is the most common among the large blades, the 50 to 100 meter long blades, these offshore blades. And on the bottom uh, right picture, we see an internal structure of the, of the blade. It's a cross-sectional look. And we can see within the space of the blade, in this empty space, there are two supporting walls. These supporting walls is to reduce the level of internal vibration of the blade itself. The blade faces variations of the wind and variations of air pressures. And it would like to vibrate. In order to reduce the level of vibration, we put two supporting walls. There's another method of putting a pipe all along with the top right corner. We put a very strong light. It's like a long bone along the empty space of the blade itself and then cover it by two halves. Glue them, glue this system all together, less vibrations. This is just a simple view of the lift vector and the drag vector of a, of a wind turbine, which is exactly the same as the airplane wing. Same physical concept, same physical principle. The picture on the right says the front edge is curved, the back is sharp, just sharp like a knife. The reason that I want the front edge of the blade to be curved is because I want to wind flow in both directions smoothly. We don't want to cut it. We want to let it flow. The reason that the back is sharp as a knife because we like to have as least amount of vacuum at the end in order to reduce or minimize the turbulence at the back. We mentioned before that the blades of the horizontal one have to be self-supporting. They are only attached at the root. The Savonius, also the Darius, are supported with two ones in the center. By the way, the H, the H, V, the, the, the H type VAWT have supports in the center of the blades as well. Top, center, bottom. The supports themselves, in order to reduce vibrations, in order to reduce the turbulences, in order to increase the efficiency, the support themselves add extra structure to the turbine itself. Now, the Savonius VAWT, they are much easier, the blades themselves, they are much easier to manufacture than the blades, the long blades of the horizontal ones or the Darius ones. Darius one, like the two knives, very difficult to manufacture because they have a twist and they have to be homogeneous. If they will not be homogeneous in its, de in its design, they will vibrate and they will create turbulences, wear and tear. These four pictures demonstrate how difficult is, and how weak, I'm sorry, how weak is the point at the root of the, of the blade in an HAWT. On the top left picture, we see three blades. We see the three roots. And the three roots are connected with large number of screws to the center point, the center device, which connects the three blades together. And the, ax the, the, the axle, the shaft, 
is connected to. We can see it on the right bottom picture. This 120 degrees central device assure that the shaft will be in the center, assured symmetry, but there are three weak points. The center of gravity, as we said before, is so much away from that particular device in the, center, in, in the right bottom corner that it creates a moment, it creates a, a shoulder effect forces. And the problem is not only that particular uh, uh, effect of having that weak point, is when the, the blade changes its position all the time, the center of gravity moves along the blade itself. And when it moves along the blade itself and the blade itself is twisted and it has a cross section and going being smaller and smaller at the end, means there are different forces being applied to the weak point in the different positions of the blade along the circle of rotation. So there are a lot of stresses, number one, on the weak point, number two, along the blade itself, when we talk about large HAWT blades. These demonstrate what we just said before. Look at the, tel at the picture on the right uh, top corner. And this particular amount of time, the position of, the, of one of the three blades is 90 degrees down, facing the ground. So there's a pulling, pulling force down there, and it's in the same line as the blade. So the center of gravity is on the root, is on the nickel. However, the two side blades have different vectors and they create stresses on the roots, on each root. We don't talk here about uh, centrifugal forces. We assume that the three centrifugal, centrifugal forces on the three blades are equal. So the three uh, centripetal forces are the same. So there's no such thing as a walk-off. There's no such thing as the nickel being drunk and being vibrate sideways. Let's assume that the three forces are equal, identical. But the center of gravity on each blade is in different place, creating different stresses on the weak points, as we've seen in the picture on the left. At that particular position of the three blades, there are different vectors of forces. Each blade has different stress on the nickel. That means the nickel sees different stresses coming from all around it continuously. It's a repetitive type of operation if the wind speed will be stable, if there will not be vibrations, if there won't be any turbulences. So if it's pure optimum system, environmental system, this problem of stresses on the root is being compensated. It's repetitive and the designers know how to take it into consideration. Unfortunately, nature is a random, has a random effects. Wind change directions. Wind change intensity. Yes turbulences, no turbulences. So being not an optimum system, that weak points create a major, major factor in terms of the maintenance slash cost of the life cycle cost of the turbine itself. The picture on the right bottom corner is uh, an analysis of what we just said before. Look at the tip on the right corner, right bottom corner, look at the tip of the blade itself. It vibrates up and down. The root pulling power, stress point, and the vibrations run along the blade itself. If we are talking about 40, 50, 60 meters long blade, we can appreciate how much big, how, how large is the problem. 
like you said, just to summarize this particular thing, because it's very, very important. The center of gravity moves. At the same time, the system vibrates. It created double effect. These forces, parasitical forces, might be synchronized and create a larger amplitude of the entire movement, unexpected, unpredictable movement of the blade itself. Let's talk about the blades, but uh, consider now the, the, the aspect of a torque. And a variation of the torque in Savonius uh, VAWT. Darius turbine have curved blades. Narrow, long, twisted, they are very complicated to manufacture. The blades, so-called blades of the Savonius, have the same shape along the length. Sometimes they are twisted, sometimes they are not twisted. The blades of the Savonius, they are larger than their, their blades of the HAWT for the same rated power. Meaning if I need one kilowatt turbine, Savonius will be bigger than the horizontal. Now the picture on the right hand side demonstrates some very interesting effect on the torque. The wind coming on from the bottom, the lower level wind, hit a bigger wall, a larger contact area of the blade of the Savonius. The upper wind sees smaller contact area. That means the torque generated by the lower wind is larger than the torque ge being generated by the upper wind. This, the, this variation, this difference between the lower torque and the upper torque create a situation that the, the, the turbine itself vibrates. The torque on the bottom is bigger than the torque on the top. So there are forces that go this way. Not only the wind slip along, but also forces, mechanical forces. And this is in all directions of the wind. So this difference in the torque level between different wind intensity along the height of the blade itself cause vibrations and mechanical stresses. Now, in this slide, I would like to show you some interesting aspects of our Darius VAWT in terms of the blades. But first of all, let's for a second talk about the HAWT blade. They are subject to periodical, the H, they are subject, subject to periodical loads due to wind shear. Wind coming to the blade changes direction, so there's a wind shear factor. This change of direction creates a fatigue of the blade. Compared to this, the blades of the Savonius are subject to large bending moments due to the centripetal acceleration. What happens is the wind comes, hit a large contact area, which rotate the turbine. We're talking about Savonius VAWT, but some of the wind comes back. So there are forces that are coming back toward the center. The centrifugal force push me outside. The centripetal force uh, push me toward the center. There should be an equilibrium between the two, otherwise there will be a walk-off. But because of the variation of torques, there is a natural parasitic inherent walk-off to the Savonius. Because of these natural parasitic forces, there is a large bending moment. Now, compared to these two, Let's sh I'll show you a few something interesting about the Darius. Because of the centrifugal forces, the blades wants to be pushed away from the center, compared to Savonius. This effect decreases as the turbine size increases, since the centripetal acceleration decreases with increasing turbine radius. 
at the same constant blade speed. As the distance between the blades and the center gets bigger, the force to the center gets slow, smaller.